we give up when we know we have a choice to give up. So if we don't give ourselves a choice, then we, we, we basically can't give up. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to uh, Build Being's um, podcast series. And today we have Hannah. Welcome Hi. Hannah. Thanks Hi, thank so much you so for much. agreeing to do this. Yeah, because I think uh, many, many times when I hear Hannah speak or, you know, look, looking at her post, like it always gives me this fire, yeah, or, or I'm inspired. So, so glad that, you know, you agreed to do this with us. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, and, and today, um, we are going to talk about uh, and discover the topic of, you know, um, being an introvert and, you know, being a fighter as an introvert. Yeah, because uh, we all know that actually the world, yeah, it is made for, a lot of things are actually made for extroverts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and, you know, uh, and I think you're the best person to ask. Like, personally, I love, I love um, seeing your posts and, you know, how, I feel like introverts are being hurt. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let, let's let's talk about it today. Okay. Okay. Um, you're very kind. I'm guessing you're an introvert as well. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Hannah, for for you, right? Because you're you're a singer, songwriter, actress, model, like very very under the limelight. How do you, what, what do you love most and how do you cope actually as an introvert? I think for me, uh, having the opportunity to push the boundaries of my comfort zone as an introvert who's been battling with the lack of confidence and inferiority complex all my life. Um, that's what I, I began to love more about uh, the entertainment industry, it, it wasn't something that I did constantly. It was more of something on the side. Um, my background is software development. So I was running a software development company and trying to wow. kind of make ends meet by doing all sorts, of, all sorts of things, trying to monetize whatever I could. Um, so I did dabble and and, 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 and try different things from uh, marketing to financial planning, um, taking up um, investing courses and <laughs> just basically trying to soak up whatever I could because uh, I was desperate to survive. Um, so I think as an introvert, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I struggle with conversations like even this I'm nervous talking to you um, the fact that it's being recorded as well makes me really nervous you know sometimes I wonder well, what I say you know I don't have the right words sometimes to articulate how I feel so yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean for me being in the entertainment industry was kind of um, against <laughs> yeah, yeah. great in my being but it wasn't an, an avenue for me to earn extra income and it was something that I stumbled upon coincidentally and I thought okay if I could make some additional income after my corporate work hours um, that would help pay the bills and basically speed up the process uh, to at that time I was pursuing financial freedom so yeah, yeah so so to me I didn't really think so much I mean I guess the hunger for to survive was a little bigger than the mm. fear of people and stage yeah. and everything else. So um, looking back, I thought that it, it actually gave me room um, for accelerated growth. I see accelerated growth because, you know, having to be in situations that are typically more challenging than usual gives us an opportunity to grow a little faster. That's what I like to think. So having to basically stretch my extended work hours and my corporate job obligations and learning to manage and deal with a wider spectrum of people 
people types or personalities. Um, some more difficult to deal with than others. <laughs> but I think it's the people that help us grow. I mean, we, we, we encounter so many different profiles of people along the way. And, yeah. and learning, the, the more types of people that you learn to deal with, yeah. I think the, the faster we mature. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Hannah, you're really, really a fighter. Like, <laughs> like all, all the experiences that you have shared just now. So, like, I, I'm curious. Um, yeah. you, you mentioned that, you know, you have tried out so many things and it, mm-hmm. is, it is not the easiest, um, um, you know, a, as an introvert. What, what's, the, what's the one thing, you know, that keeps you... Um, like okay, I can do this. Like what? What? What's? What's your one magic trick or recipe that you keep so that you know you can keep on going? Because there are a lot of times I think we we do feel like giving up or like you know what? Let's forget about it. Uh, I'll yeah. just go for this. Yeah, I think for me, we give up when we know we have the choice to give up. So if we don't give ourselves a choice, then we we basically can't give up. And I, 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 I saw challenges, um, like getting out of the comfort zone is, is, is what a lot of introverts struggle with because, yeah. you know, having to push that boundary and continue, continuously push that boundary, um, it makes us really uncomfortable, but that, that discomfort that we feel is called growth. Um, so I, I just basic, basically took the approach of not giving myself a choice. Um, it was for me an avenue to make ends meet <laughs> uh, while doing other jobs simultaneously. So I was hungry, hungry to be financially secure, hungry for acceptance, hungry for the validation of my industry peers. Mm. Um, it is not the best motivator, but I believe that's how a lot of us start anyway. And um, then after you've come one full circle, then you realize that, ah, <laughs> It wouldn't have meant a thing um, if we didn't accept who we were in the first place. You know, um, that's how a lot of people regress into depression, suicide, and because we struggle to find meaning and purpose in the pain through it all, in chasing the illusion of you know what people call success, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I learned that success is not a cure for depression. Uh, we think that if we're successful on the outside, we'll be happy on the inside, but it's actually the other way around. Happiness is anchored, if our happiness is anchored to so much volatility, then each day will be a brand new emotional roller coaster. Yeah. So you don't want to be in that kind of theme park. It's, it's yeah. not fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like every, every day, your happiness is dependent on something else. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah that, that, that's so good. So, Hannah, you shared about your, your up, ups and downs. Is there, any, is there a point of your life where it was so tough that, um, like, like you'll share with us your lowest point in your life? And, and how did you break through that, that, um, that cycle? That cycle? Okay. For me, uh... 2019 coming into 2020 was rough. Um, to be honest, that was the most intense part of the last decade. And I definitely look forward to sharing more about it when the season is over and I fully overcome it. But for now, you know, I'm just, I know speaking to you and if this goes out, if, if, if you or someone else is in a similar situation in life, I just want to remind you that Mm-hmm. Um, breakdowns always have the potential to create breakthroughs and I always remind myself that before the birth of a new chapter is the most intense yeah. um, but you know what the closer we are to wherever we want to get yeah. the harder it is so you know I just want to say you got this <laughs> yeah so um, Hannah, in your definition, what, what does success look like to you? Ah, <laughs> that's a very good question. Success, hmm. Hmm. Um, I think, well, to me, success, if you ask me, 
many years ago, success would have meant um, financial security. Yeah. Um, success would have meant that, you know, I had all my, my ducks in a row. <laughs> but um, I don't know. If, 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 if you ask me today, I would think that success is wanting what I already have and being able to wake up every day um, knowing that I have so many things to be grateful for. And I think over the years, I was running and running and running, chasing this illusion of success. Mm. Um, but then this year, I realized that, you know, success is, is basically, to me, what I already have is not quantified by the standards of anyone else, the metrics of anyone else but our own. And when I've learned, when I learned to not anchor the illusion of success in anyone else's measures or metrics except mine, then, then, then my life becomes a little happier. And during this MCO, it became a little more evident that actually I don't really need so much. You know, I don't need the frills. I have a place to call home. I have food to eat. I have clean running water to drink and shower in. I have Wi-Fi. Um, and so many things to be grateful for. So instead of focusing on the things that I've lost or I don't have, you know, in this season, people have lost their jobs, pay cuts. And I mean, it's evident. It happens across the board. It's not isolated to just us. So we can't say, poor me. You know, everyone else is taking the hit. Yeah. So instead of focusing on what I lost or the 30% pay cut that I got or whatever it is, I, I, I decided to, hey, maybe I should focus on what I actually have right now. So I have this list. Um, I call it the I'm so thankful for list. <laughs> um, so each morning I go through it and it makes me the happiest person going through it after that because I realize that, you know, no matter how much I think I'm lacking, yeah. I actually have so much to be thankful for. And this list and, and having that posture of gratitude helps me to power through the extra difficult days. Yeah. This joy basically is my strength and, 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 and being able to live life this way, I think is true success for me, being a happy person. <laughs> I used to admire people with luxuries. Now I admire people with inner peace and, yeah. you know, they say unquenchable joy, unspeakable mm -hmm. joy. And that's what I crave for and that's what I strive for. And I think ultimately I want to be able to, um, be able to take my last breath. If today is my last day, I want to be able to take my last breath knowing that I exhausted all the resources that I was entrusted to yeah. and I didn't leave any stones unturned and I can say that it is finished and I just take my last breath with a smile, no regrets. So I used to think that, oh, I need to have so much investment yeah. um, secured or that much money in the bank. Yeah. But I realized that what happens after I die, right? My investment after that, am I investing in my eternity? So I, I have been questioning all these things, you know, what happens when we die? And because a lot of people around me <laughs> are passing away suddenly. So it made me question existence, made me question if, you know, what I was fighting for was actually worth it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is the top three habits or skill every single person should have, like in, in your opinion, in order to, you know, um, be closer to where they want to be? Um, I can think of the most important thing for me that I noticed that was tough, but it was pivotal. Um, yeah. in achieving the goals every uh, season in life and that is consistency. consistency. Um, the great Bruce Lee once said that long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. Uh, we don't have to be extreme, we just need to be consistent because motivation will come and go. Uh, but we need to learn to build habits and one of my favorite reminders to self is keep your diet simple, keep your workout simple, keep your skincare routine simple, keep your relationships simple, and be consistent with all of them. Um, 
Um, so that's something I learned to live by. I used to have like, when I started off, you know, big goals and oh, I need to do this. I need to learn time management. And, but everything, I just couldn't keep up because I wasn't consistent and I had um, two two big chunks to, to chew on. So I learned that, you know, you break it down to small manageable pieces, yeah. small manageable size, whether you're going on a diet, you know, whether it's a weight loss goal, yeah. you want to make sure it's sustainable yeah. so that you can be consistent. So it's not about what we, you know, people say they want to lose weight, get a six pack. It's not about that one workout that you do over three hours, one time in the gym, but it's about 20 minutes you know, every three days or just doing 1,000 steps a day. So yeah. it's consistency. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Yeah. It, it is not like in seven days you lose 10 kgs that can be right? Yeah. <laughs> how, how long can you maintain that, that, that lifestyle, that, that, that health? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, one last question, Hannah. So, I think, um, during this period of time, it is it is tough for everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. do you have any advice um, that you can give to to everyone out there in this season? Um, yeah, I think in this season, I personally know a lot of people have lost their jobs. People yeah. who previously owned businesses or doing things that they wouldn't have thought themselves to be doing just to make ends meet. But, you know, we do what we can. And sometimes they say, oh, no, now I'm downgraded to this. But, hey, you know what? Nobody can make you inferior without your consent. It's not a power that anyone can have. And so I just want to remind everyone out there to focus on the journey not the outcome because success is what we attract by the person we become and we become i came across this 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 quote we become like the gods we worship so we have to pick wisely so if we worship the world that is materialistic then we become harsh and unforgiving and we become like so and if we worship money we yeah. put money as priority then we become very volatile we become Volatile like currency, right? Which can be strong, never stable. <laughs> and then we become useful to everyone else but ourselves. We yeah. become uh, duplicatable. I mean, uh, there's always going to be someone with more than what we have. Um, it's a very draining cycle and then you'll find it very difficult to trust people <laughs> because you never know if they're um, nice to you because of what you have or who you truly are. So choose wisely and... Uh, so, yeah, these three things, basically, uh, our mental health is very important. Yeah. Uh, but we cannot have, we cannot be mentally strong if we're not spiritually strong. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, in essence, try to focus on the journey and uh, learn to pause instead of quit sometimes. We all have permission to rest. We, yeah. we don't have to try and make everyone happy. The only way to make everyone happy is to sell ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Hannah. Um, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure for me to, you know, speak to you again. Yeah, hope we see you again in, in Built Beings. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Shermaine. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>